In this video, we'll have a look at the different types of neurons. Now, when we talk about neurons in general, we can sort of view neurons have, having three major functional regions. One is the receptive region, and that would be the dendrites and cell bodies. The next would be the axon, and that would be the conducting region. And then we have the secretory region, where, of course, neurotransmitters are secreted. Now, neurons we could also classify based on their function. Right? So let's have a look. So now if a physiologist was looking at neurons, they, they'd like to describe function, whereas anatomists like to describe the shape. So let's start out with the functional description of neurons. So we've already mentioned that we have sensory, also known as afferent, and they carry information towards the CNS. Their cell bodies um, are in the, the peripheral nervous system, receive information from sensory receptors, and they bring the information via axons to either the brain or spinal cord. Now, typically, they are a pseudo-unipolar or a bipolar-type neuron. Now, these two terms we're going to see are names that are associated with the anatomy, not the physiology. But there, so there's two competing names for neurons, and I know it's confusing at times. But as I said, uh, the, the physiologists name them based on function. So that'd be sensory, interneurons, motor, whereas the anatomists base things on the shape. Okay, but we're going to focus in on the functional groups. So we just talked about sensory and afferent. The other group are the inter neurons, also known as association neurons. And they we, they we really find within the central nervous system between the sensory and the motor neurons. These are where the processing is done, the integration is done, game plans are put together as to how you're going to act in certain circumstances and what type of output you're going to send down the motor neurons. So the interneurons are, are the largest group of neurons actually in the central nervous system. Um, and usually, if we look at their shape, they're a multipolar type of neuron. And then, of course, functionally, we have the motor or efferent, and they carry information away from the cell bodies and the CNS to muscles and glands. And in terms of their shape, they're, they mostly fall into the multipolar category. So just to remind ourselves that functionally, we have three groups, sensory, also known as afferent, Interneurons, also known as association. Motor, also known as efferent. And here we can kind of see a, a, a summary of a lot of this. Is that we have things such as the multipolar neurons. So what's a multipolar neuron? Well, you can see it has a number of poles at this end, the, the dendritic end. Okay. Um, the bipolar neurons... As you see, they have very small dendrites, very long process, the cell body, and another long process, so bipolar. And here's a group. These used to be called, and let me get rid of the first bit, they used to be called unipolar neurons, but they're not true unipolar neurons if we want to be correct about shape and things like that. So the name is basically changed to pseudo unipolar neurons. And you can see these, is that they have the receptive endings here, information gets transmitted. You can see how the cell body actually sits on a little stalk, sort of over to the side. And then we have a central axon that will take information further along. And this is a great little uh, summary of all the different types that it talks about uh, the functional classes. And we already talked about motor, sensory, um, etc. And we talked about a bit about shapes. So let's have a look at um, specific neuronal component groups, how uh, they're grouped together. Now, in the CNS, we're going to have a couple terms. One is nuclei and one is tracts. So in the central nervous system, a nuclei is a cluster of neuronal cell bodies. So this would be a case where a bunch of individual cell bodies are very close to each other. And this cluster is what we'll call a nuclei. Now, a tract is a bundle of axons. 
So if a bundle of axons are heading off together and traveling almost like lanes of a highway, then we call it tracks. So central nervous system, we have nuclei and tracks. Now let's look at the peripheral nervous system. Now this work get, can get a little confusing for people who haven't seen this before. Is the same type of structure gets a different name, and I apologize for that. So in the peripheral nervous system, if I have a cluster of neuronal cell bodies, I do not call it a nuclei, because that's what I call it in the central nervous system. But instead, in the peripheral nervous system, I call it a ganglia. So a ganglia is a cluster of neuronal cell bodies. In the peripheral nervous system, a nerve is a bundle of axons. But you can see there's some homology here that a uh, in the central nervous system, a cluster of neuronal cell bodies is called a nuclei. Peripheral nervous system, cluster of neuronal cell bodies is called a ganglia. Same thing, bundle of axons in the central nervous system, I call it a tracts, but the exact same thing, a bundle of axons, but in the peripheral nervous system, I call nerves. So something we just have to live with and we should know those terms because we will be using them now, let's talk, introduce the neuroglia. The neuroglia uh, also can be called just glia or glial cells. And often you hear those terms. What do they do? These are very important. There's actually more glial cells than there are actual neurons in the nervous system. And these, if you want to break it down to some really some big descriptions that cover a lot of ground, is they provide structural support and protection of neurons. They also help to maintain the environment of the tissue. They are able to divide, unlike neurons, which cannot divide. They can divide and they can fill space if neurons die. Now, um, th there's not one type of glial cell. There, is, there are groups of glial cells. And each group has its specific location, whether it's in the central nervous system or the peripheral. We do not see the glial cells of the peripheral nervous system in the central nervous system and vice versa. So if you're a peripheral nervous system glial cell, that's where you live. Now, the different types of glial cells also have specialized functions. And I'm just going to introduce the names and then we're going to uh, end this video because the next video will come back and talk about them individually. But let's just have a look at that theme that the central nervous system has its own group of neuroglial cells. And there are four types we find in the central nervous system. The astrocytes, the oligodendrocytes, the microglia, and the ependymal cells. And let's look at the peripheral nervous system. It's two different glial cell families. We have the Schwann cells and the satellite cells. So you can see there's no overlap between central and peripheral nervous system. We do not see astrocytes down here and we do not find Schwann cells up there. You either are this type and you exist in the central nervous system or you are these types and you exist in the peripheral nervous system. Now in the next video we're going to come back and start talking about some of the functions of these different glial cells.